we are live. All praises. All praises to Water King. Mm. Con, All right, Shalom. <clears throat> shalom, Shalom. Uh, first and foremost, we want to give all praises, glory, and honor to the Most High. Uh, we say, Kahala, Abinawa, Yahweh, by Shema Mashiach, Yahweh Shai. That's all praises to the Most High God. Real name is Yahweh. All right, in the name of his only begotten son, uh, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ or Jesus. Um, so you are at another War Zone Wednesdays with Yahweh's camp. All right, again, this is War Zone Wednesdays with Yahweh's camp. All right, uh, I'm the Captain Ra'am from Yahweh's camp. I'm going to let the brother Kazak go ahead and introduce himself, and we're going to get right into it. Shalom, Israel. This is your brother Kazak. I want to say all praises to Yahweh by Shimmy Yahweh Shah, Baraka. All praises, all praises, King. Uh, so the brother's going to come in, he's going to read for us. Uh, so, uh, so for, uh, what's funny is, um, you know, before we get started, right, um, you know, we're going to go into Deuteronomy 23 and 7, and we're going to give you Yahweh's Camp's um, uh, breakdown and understanding on the scripture. It's widely used amongst uh, Christians whether they're uh, you know, from different nations, right? But it's widely used amongst Christians, apologetics about why, uh, um, you know, as Israelites, we have a disdain for uh, so-called white people, uh, which is, or the Caucasian people, which we identify holistically as the Edomites uh, biblically. So biblically speaking, um, if you know about the, the understanding of all camps, most camps, uh, I think for the most part, most camps, we are um, on the same, the, under some understanding that Esau is the so-called white man, the Caucasian, uh, however you want to word it, identify it and structure it. Um, what's funny is, you know, we just have, um, it's what, the 6th? What's today? The 8th? What's today? The 8th? Come. August 8th? Yeah, yeah, it's August 8th. We're about three days, right? We're about three days past um, a new black moment a new um uh, a new holiday amongst so-called black uh black people which is august 5th 2023 the alabama uh the alabama riverboat fiasco which was a beautiful beautiful thing um when you really break it down as far as seeing our people um you know uh, come together uh breaking all types of uh, misconceptions black men was able to swim that day Right, black women and black men came together to to to, uh, to defeat a common enemy, which is of course the Edomite. Uh, oh, they they abhorred the hell out of those white folks uh, <laughs> on Saturday. So um, all praise to the Most High, man, for for brothers coming together. Yet a white chair, an infamous white chair, going around circulating amongst uh, social media. If you're living living under a rock. For the last couple of days, uh, you've you've seen it, um, and again, um, the scriptures talk about it, right? About as as uh, Israelites and as so-called Black, Hispanic, and Native Americans, we're supposed to come to the aid and the uh, the, the help and the defense of our beloved brothers and sisters. So, um, all praise to the Most High for that man. Get the Most High hand. All praises uh, for brothers coming together um, and defending that uh, that atrocity that could have happened. And far too many times, right, we've seen, we've seen it come to where, uh, you know, it doesn't work out for our brothers in the end. You know, they could have killed that brother, and traditionally they probably would have, uh, but our brothers did not stand in the blood of their own fellow Israelites. So, um, again, just wanted to go into that. Um, Salaki, hold on one second. All right, come on, come on. Let me close that door real quick. <clears throat> so... Um, so again, so with the spirit of today, um, you know, we was going, going to Deuteronomy 23 and 7, which is a, uh, again, it's a fundamental scripture on people that, um, my camera's shaking. Uh, it's a fundamental scripture that Christians try to use about, uh, I guess, hatred, right, toward the, the so-called white man. And, and Kazaka and I was talking about this, uh, yesterday about how they admit that Esau or Edom is the so-called white white person right they admit it when they say well why do you guys hate white people or caucasians and what do they do they go to deuteronomy 23 and 7 and it says thou should not a whore edomite uh, matter of fact get that real quick because let's go ahead and bring it out 
Come. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23 and verse 7. Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite. Uh huh. For he is thy brother. He is thy what? He is thy brother. He is thy brother, right? They say, do not, do not abhor an Edomite because he indeed is thy brother, which, you know, if you know the scriptures, yeah, Esau is uh, Edom, and Edom is the the uh, the brother of Jacob, and we identify ourselves as Jacob. So that scripture right there, people just read that scripture, close the book, that's it, right? You never see another uh, argument brought out for or against them um, in that regard. It's just uh, they read the scripture, and then they'll walk off, right? What's going on, bro? All right, I'm doing a lesson right now. All right. Um, so all in all, bro, like um, that's my neighbor right here. So all in all, let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, uh, so let's get um, again that discussion. This whole understanding took place in the wilderness, right? It took place in the wilderness. So, you know, we got the congregation. And when you understand before we had a, a first or second temple, we always had a tabernacle, right, with the congregation congregated too, right? So you had Israelites from all over that came together and they congregated at a, a, a temple or what you would call a tent before it was a temple. Um, so let's get um, Deuteronomy 23 and run real quick. Comes the book of Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse one. Uh-huh. He that is wounded in the stones mm -hmm. or hath his privy member cut off shall not enter into the congregation of Yahweh. Come, come. So we're going to go through this verse by verse, all right? I want, to, I want to make sure that our brothers and sisters that is watching this really get edified on uh, what, what it means to not abhor an Edomite. What does it mean to not abhor somebody, right? So uh, at least when it comes to this scripture. So it says, that last part, shall not enter into the congregation that's very important all right what is the congregation of course we go into the gathering of what of the people but more specifically in this scripture we're going to go into it it's also geared towards the sacrifices see the most high and we were talking about this yesterday the most high gave us laws that was going to gear towards our people before we actually took uh that position Right. So you had laws about a king that was given in the book of the, in the wilderness before Saul, the first king of Israel, came on the scene. So it, the Most High was giving us these laws before we even uh, took that position. Right. So read that part again, brother. Verse one. Come. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23 and verse one. Uh huh. He that is wounded in the stones or hath his privy member cut off shall not enter into the congregation of Yahweh. So let's get Lamentations 1 and 10. What, is it, what does it mean when it says the congregation of the Most High God, Yahweh? Alright, so uh, let's get that and then um, we're also going to get a few more precepts to back up what it means to congregate and what's that, what that congregation uh, truly is, right? Let me Come. know when you got that up. Come. I got it. I... Come, on, bring it out. It's the book of Lamentations, chapter one and verse ten. Uh huh. The adversary hath spread out his hand upon all her pleasant things. Come on. For she hath seen that the heathen entered into her sanctuary. So let's say the heathen, right? When you go into the heathen, going into the sanctuary, we're looking at during the time of uh, of Babylonian, right? Babylonians coming in. And overtaking that temple, right? Even when you go into the Maccabees, this is the whole idea of Hanukkah: is they had to re-cleanse the temple, that congregation, that tabernacle, or even that sanctuary was defiled. Okay, so it says, "For the heathen entered into a sanctuary." Um, because can the heathen can the heathen go into the temple of the Most High? La a, -ah. la a, -ah, right? So this is going into the uh, the, the complete downfall of Yahshua, right? The complete downfall of our people. 
when the heathen get to go into the temple of the Most High, you know the Most High is completely gone. It's the Most High is not dealing with Yahshua at that time, right? <clears throat> so it said the heathen enter into a sanctuary. Come on. Whom thou didst command that they should not enter into thy congregation. And the Most High commanded that they do not enter into the congregation of the Most High, which is what? The sanctuary. All right. Let's get Leviticus 17, 6. All right. <clears throat> Let's get Leviticus chapter 17, verse 6. All praises. Huh. It's the book of Leviticus chapter 17 and verse 6. Mm -hmm. And the priest shall sprinkle the blood upon the altar of Yahweh at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and burn the fat for a sweet savor unto Yahweh. Hallelujah. All right. So you see that as another witness right there. And give me Sirach, uh 23 and 4. All right. Sirach 23 and 4. So, again, it says the priest shall sprinkle the blood upon the altar of the Most High, right, at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Again, understanding that the Most High had a tabernacle, right, in the wilderness. And in that tabernacle, you had the Holy of Holies, right? You had uh, the, the, the tent of meeting. You had all the, uh, the instruments of the Most High. You had the mercy seat, the shoe bread, the Ten Commandments, all these different uh, relics and items was in that 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 sacred place, right? <clears throat> so even certain parts of the temple, of the congregation, only the sons of Aaron, the Levites, was allowed to go into, right? So one that is wounded in the in the privy member and in the stones cannot enter into the congregation of the Lord. All right, get that in uh, Sirach twenty three and twenty four. Con. This is the book of Syrac, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 23 and verse 24. Mm -hmm. She shall be brought out into the congregation. Come on. And inquisition shall be made of her children. So now we're talking about a woman, right, that that has uh, multiple men. And they're going to bring her into the what? Into the congregation. Right. Read on. Verse 25. Uh -huh. her, her children shall not take root, and her branches shall bring forth no fruit. Uh -huh. She shall leave her memory to be cursed, and her reproach shall not be blotted out. Oh, praises, right? So you see, also understanding that in that congregation, that um, that meeting place, which you would also say is like a, you hate to say it like a church almost, but Again, that's where the uh, the sacrifices took place, right? You had the holy sacrifices, the holy meeting places. All that was all done where? In the tabernacles, all right? In the congregation, the temple, which ended up becoming a temple. So so it says, Deuteronomy 23 and 1, He that is wounded in the stones or hath his privy members cut off shall not enter into the congregation. So that's the, the precedence of this chapter moving forward. Is who can and who cannot come into the congregation of the Lord, which is what? The sanctuary. All right. Give me verse two. Come, verse two. Uh huh. A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of Yahweh. Even to his tenth generation shall he not enter into the congregation of Yahweh. All right. So again, now we're talking about another uh, person that cannot enter into the congregation is also who? A bastard, which you would call a mamzer or a mamzer, should not enter into the congregation till his tenth generation shall he not enter into the congregation. Right. So let's get Exodus 33 and verse number seven. Again, um, this one, this again, this doesn't really need explanation because, again, it's just giving you another people group that would not qualify to enter into the, uh, the, the, the temple, right, or the congregation or the tabernacle. That's all this is talking about, right? So give me verse uh, 7, Exodus 33 and 7. Come, it's the book of Exodus, chapter 33 and verse 7. Mm -hmm. 
And Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it without the camp, afar off from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of the congregation. He called it the what? The tabernacle of the congregation. Mm. So the the, congr the tabernacle was called the tabernacle of the congregation. Understanding that moving, you know, moving in that, that spirit, we understand the congregation is where all priestly duties was also taken care of. Okay, read on. And it came to pass that everyone which sought Yahweh went out unto the tabernacle of the congregation, which was without the camp. Which was without the camp. Okay, read on verse number eight. Verse eight. And it came to pass when Moses went out unto the tabernacle that all the people rose up and stood every man at his tent door mm -hmm. and looked after Moses until he was gone into the tabernacle. Read on. And it came to pass as Moses entered into the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended uh -huh. and stood at the door of the tabernacle and Yahweh talked with Moses. You see that? So even the most I was able to come down into the congregation of the tabernacle. So this is a very holy and set apart place that we're talking about. So this is why it's important when we say the the bastard, right, cannot go into the congregation of the Lord. Uh, one that has his privy member cut off cannot enter into the congregation of the Lord. It's the same as saying those people have uh, ailments. And even though that place is uh, a meeting place, only certain people can come in there and, and show up um, with that uh, with that job description as a, as a priest or even as bringing in their um, just their sacrifices. Right. Give me verse number. Uh, let me see. Verse number uh, 10. This is Exodus 33 and verse 10. Uh huh. And all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door. And all the people rose up and worshipped every man in his tent door. Every man in his tent door. Okay, so so again, I just want to hammer that home on the congregation and the tabernacle and the uh, the, the meeting place, even the which is going to be called the temple later, because who built the temple of the Most High was Solomon, right? So this is way after what we're talking about is around 1446 to about 1406 uh, BC. This is the time period we're talking about. Um, Solomon didn't come in until years later, right? So we're still in the wilderness and they're still gearing these things up for when we come into the land and establish as, as Israelites, right? And again, this is talking about to the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans, right, that go back to the 12 tribes of Israel. What are we talking about? This is your heritage right here. So when we go into Deuteronomy 23 and 7, and they say you cannot abhor an Edomite, we're setting the foundation on what that even talks about. What's the context of this whole thing? Well, what does it mean to abhor somebody? We're talking about it, right? You cannot bring, uh, you cannot abhor them when it comes to what they're bringing in for their sacrifices when you eventually have them in garrison. All right. And get verse three. Let's, let's, let's make that point. So get verse number, verse number three. Come, the book of Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse three. Uh-huh. An Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to their 10th generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. You see that? So it says a Moabite or an Ammonite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord even into their 10th generation so they not enter the, into the congregation forever, right? So again, give me, um, let's get uh, Deuteronomy 12 and 26, all right? I'm going to show you um, what was going on. These bugs, uh, I'm going to show you what was going on uh, in, in those tabernacles. This is law 370, all right? If you know the Torah, all right, if you know the Torah, um, you got about 600 some odd laws that apply to different people in different times, right? If you're a, a farmer, you have farming um, uh, laws that you must abide by. If you're a businessman, you have business laws that you must abide by. For instance, usury, 
um, or interest on a fellow Israelite. Um, but when you have when you're a Levite, right, you have different laws that you have to abide by in the congregation or the tabernacle. And one of those things was blood sacrifices, right? So let's get that in uh, Deuteronomy 12, 26. Come. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 12 and verse 26. Only thy holy things which thou hast and thy vows thou shalt take and go unto the place which the Lord shall choose. Come. And the place that the Lord shall choose is always where the tabernacle is. Right. So let's just use the word church. Right. I think that may be easier to, to, to digest when it talks about. Um, the religious meeting spots that the Israelites went to. So we say church, right? We're talking about places where people came to worship. Also, when it comes to sacrifices and offering up burnt offerings and things of that nature, um, it was also at what? The tabernacle, the congregation, or even the uh, the church, right? So it says, only thy holy things, which thy, thy vows, thou shalt take up and go unto the place which the Lord shall choose. Look at verse 27. Uh, bring that out. Come, verse 27. Uh-huh. And thou shalt offer thy burnt offerings. So your burnt offerings is offered at the place which the Lord shall choose. Right? Read on. The flesh and the blood. The what? The flesh and the blood. So you got the flesh and the blood is also offered where? In the congregation of the Lord. Read. Upon the altar of the Lord thy God. So the, the sacrifices was offered upon what? The altar. The altar was, was where? In the tabernacle of the Lord. And the tabernacle during the time of Deuteronomy was in, in a tent. Right? And I highly recommend brothers to go back and look at the tabernacle when we were mobile. Right? When we were mobilizing and traveling through the wilderness, we were able to break down, right, and, and reset up the tent. As we moved along. And then it wasn't, again, it wasn't until Solomon came around where the Most High had his own house. They put the, the, the tabernacle in a big old building and it was called Solomon's Temple. Right? So, so just understand that during the time that they were doing this, the Most High always had a presence in those tabernacles, in that tabernacle as they were moving along. The Most High's presence was there. All right? So it says, so again, and it says the blood and the flesh was on that altar and the tabernacle, right? So it's showing you that they were there were sacrifices being done here in the um in the in the uh in the tabernacle, right? Uh read on. Come and the blood of thy sacrifices shall be poured out upon the altar of the Lord thy God, and thou shalt eat the flesh. And again, right, the Levites had to eat some of those burnt offerings as well. Um, and that's it on that. Let's also get, um, let me get uh, Leviticus 17, verse 3. Give me Leviticus 17, 3. So, so again, what we're going into is when it comes to abhorring the Edomite, um, for he is thy brother, again, uh, the Christian church is looking at it and saying, don't be mean to the so-called white man. All right. And what we're showing you is that the context is talking about bringing in their sacrifices uh, to the temple. All right. Uh, give me verse number three. Come. It's the book of Leviticus, chapter 17 and verse three. What man soever there be of the house of Israel that killeth an ox or lamb or goat in the camp or that killeth it out of the camp mm -hmm. and bringeth it not unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation mm, to, offer an, to offer an offering unto the Lord before the tabernacle of the Lord. Come on. Blood shall be imputed unto that man. Mm -hmm. He hath shed blood and that man shall be cut off from among his people. Con, that's a heavy scripture right there, right? So you're saying that sacrifices, again, we want to make sure we get two or three witnesses. You're seeing right here that sacrifices was brought into the tabernacle of what? 
the congregation. So what we're talking about, specifically, when you talk about another nation coming into the congregation, <clears throat> it's, it's strictly talking about them bringing in their own sacrifices, their own uh, um, uh, offerings, all right? Give me verse number five. Come, Leviticus 17, verse five. Mm -hmm. To the end that the children of Israel may bring their sacrifices, which they offer in the open field, even that they may bring them unto the Lord, unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, unto the priest, and offer them for peace offerings unto the Lord. Read verse 6. And the priest shall sprinkle the blood upon the altar of the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and burn the fat for a sweet savor unto the Lord. Hallelujah. So you're saying the, the priestly duties is done in the congregation, and one of those priestly duties was uh, sacrifices, burnt offerings. All right. So let's go right back. Let's get um, Deuteronomy 23 and verse number, uh, where we at? Verse number four? Verse four. Come on. Come on, bring it out. It's the book of Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse four. Uh-huh. Because they met you not with bread and with water in the way when ye came forth out of Egypt, and because they hired against thee, Balaam, the son of Beor of Pithor of Mesopotamia, to curse thee. Con, so, so stop right there. So we're talking about an Ammonite and a Moabite, right? It says an Ammonite or a Moabite. Verse 3 says an Ammonite or a Moabite should not enter into the congregation. Again, this is talking about them bringing their sacrifices and their offerings and being there amongst the Israelites, right? And then it says because they didn't meet you with bread, meaning when we were going through the wilderness, what were they doing, right? Did they help us? Did they assist us? We're going into, uh, again, the blessings of Abraham, Genesis 12. I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. So the other nations were supposed to bless Israel on their path to the land from Egypt. You get what I'm saying? And uh, some, of, some of these other nations uh, made it difficult for us and had us go around the Jordan, you know what I'm saying, the, the, the Jordan uh, feet. We had to go around certain places. We didn't just walk straight from Egypt into the land. We had to go through Edom. We had to come up through Moab and, and Ammon and then cross the Jordan and then come down from the, from the north and then trickle down into the south. That was how we went. We actually went the long way. We didn't go from Egypt, come through Damascus, come up through the southern kingdom and then through the northern kingdom. We had to go around, right? And because of these other nations, uh, they made it tough on us, right? So let's get Numbers 22, verse 1. All right. I want to go through the history of, uh, and if you don't know, the, 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 um, the Moabites are who you would call the Chinese today, right? Your Moabites, your Ammonites, the Japanese, right? So these, these other nations are alive and well. And they're all through uh, your, your everyday walk in life. All right, so let's get Numbers 22 and 1. We're going to read down to verse 6. Come. It's the book of Numbers, chapter 22 and verse 1. And the children of Israel set forward and pitched in the plains of Moab on this side, Jordan by Jericho. Mm -hmm. And Balak, the son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And Moab was sore afraid of the people because right. they were so, so let's stop right there. So these Moabites saw what Israel did to the Amorites, these other nations that were strong, mighty. Israel started building flame. I mean, fame when we left Egypt. First of all, when Israel left Egypt, that was uh, a shock to all the nations round about. This is why uh, Rahab the harlot sold her own family out to to ultimately uh be saved um from the israelites when she helped us out because she said she heard about the god of israel so these other nations they the moabites they knew about yahweh right and then they and they seen what the most high did they seen him in action right so give me verse number uh three come numbers 22 and verse three 
And Moab was sore afraid of the people because they were many. Mm -hmm. And Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. Read on. And Moab said unto the elders of Midian, Now shall this company lick up all that are round about us, as the ox licketh up the grass of the field. And Balak the son of Zippor was king of the Moabites at that time. Mm -hmm. Verse 5. He sent messengers there, therefore, unto Balaam, the son of Beor to Pithor, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out from Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide over against me. You see that? So you see in Israel being numbered as the sand of the sea, the stars in heaven, right? Which is, again, what the Most High promised Abraham uh, back in the book of Genesis, right? And that was a threat to the other nations round about even the Moabites, as mighty as the Moabites were. Right? Give me verse 6. Come, verse 6. Come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people. He said what? Curse me this people. He said, curse me this people. I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee. That's Genesis 12 and 3. And, and the king of uh, Moab said, curse this people. Right? Read on. For they are too mighty for me. Mm. And we were we didn't even have a homeland. This is why uh, when you go to Psalm 83 and they said they took crafty counsel and Moab was a part of that crafty counsel. Because as long as the Israelites didn't know who they were, the other nations had power. Right. They were always uh, uh, there was always a, a, a hatred towards Yasha Allah from the surrounding nations. Come on. For adventure I shall prevail, that we may smite them, and that I may drive them out of the land. For I wot that he whom thou blessed is blessed, and he whom thou cursed is cursed. So I just want to put in context, when we were in the wilderness, what uh, Balak uh, um, was, 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 was uh, putting our people against the hurdles and the boundaries and the amount of work that he was trying to put on us from getting into the land. All right, let's get uh, that same book. Give me chapter 24 and um, give me verse 17. Because now, right, Numbers 24, 17, when the Moabites did what they did, it marked them for when Yahweh come back, we go into Numbers 24, 17. Now, now we see in a future prophecy about who this this person is that's going to come back and destroy the Moabites, right? And and it actually fits right into biblical prophecy now because the Moabites being the so-called nation of China, they are a world power. So when Yahweh shall come back, right, it's only right that one of the world powers that's a part of this World War III uh, 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 funnel, right, that, that's brewing about, you got Elam that's involved, right, which is the so-called uh, India. You got um, uh, you got the Saudi Arabia, right, which is um, the Arab, right. You got, of course, you got Esau, right. You got uh, Gog and Magog, which is Russia. So you got all these different nations that's gearing up. Well, China is one of them, right. So let's get Numbers twenty-four seventeen and show you the future of of China according to biblical prophecy. Bring that out. It's the book of Numbers, chapter 24, verse 17. Mm -hmm. I'll I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, uh -huh. and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. So the scepter is Yahweh going back to Genesis 49, which is the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver, right? So... That scepter is who you would call Christ, right? Read on. And shall smite the corners of Moab. He's gonna strike, he's gonna, he's gonna strike or select you, smite the corners of the Moabites. We're talking about the nation who you would see as China today, right? Read. And destroy all the children of Sheth. Look at look at verse 18. Come on. And Edom. 
And who? Edom. And Edom, come on, shall be a possession. Now, Edom is who you would call the so-called white man, right? The Caucasian today. So Esau or Edom shall be in possession. But I thought it said, thou should not abhor Edomite. Right? But when Christ comes back, Esau is going to be in possession. Come on. Come. And Edom shall be a possession. Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies. Mm -hmm. And Israel shall do valiantly. And Israel shall do valiantly. What does it mean to be valiant? We're talking about mighty. Right? We're talking about a mighty winning. Right? Almost like what you saw on Saturday. Sunday uh, after uh, Sunday okay. evening. Israel did a valiant thing by sticking up for their brother. Even the sisters, man, was out there throwing them things, man. All right? So you're seeing uh, these biblical prophecies take place, and all you can do is thank the Most High. All right? Um, so, let's, uh, so let's also get Numbers 23 and 7. Like, when you go through Numbers, right, especially this part of Numbers, you're seeing a whole lot. It's like three or four chapters, Numbers 20 through about 24, where we had this tug of war with, with Moab. All right. So when these, you know, when we talk to these other nations and brothers that's looking to teach, you know, and these other nations come about, you got to start showing the other nations, even Moab. It's not just about Esau. Right. Ham. Right. Ham even had their role. Um, the scripture says in first Maccabees two, I think, I think it's two and ten. What nation have not had a part in our captivity? All nations had the Israelites in captivity at one time or another. All right. So so when we talk about the other nations, you got to go and, and show where any nation, right? Any nation was under everyone else's uh, uh, rulership. It's only our people, right? Blacks, Hispanics, and of course, Native Americans. This is why we try to tell our people, gather yourselves together. Old nation, what? Old nation not desired. Gosh. All right. Let's get that uh, Numbers 23, verse number seven. It's the book of Numbers, chapter 23 and verse seven. And he took up his parable and said, Balak, the king of Moab, hath brought me from Aram out of the mountains of the east, saying, come, curse me, Jacob, and come defy Israel. You see that? So even even the king of Moab, right, had this parable and it was talking about Jacob coming to curse uh, uh, Moab, right? Jacob was cursing Moab. All right. Uh, I've got a few more. Let's get uh, numbers 24 and 5. Is that what I want? Yeah. Yeah, get that. The book of Numbers, chapter 24 and verse 5. How goodly are thy tents, O Jacob, and thy tabernacles, O Israel. Read. As the valleys are they spread forth, as gardens by the river's side, as the trees. Lick, 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 lick. Line. I think it's line or something like that. Line aloes. Line aloes, uh huh. Salakia, which the Lord hath planted, and as cedar trees beside the waters. Right. So so this is going into Balaam, who was the prophet for Balak, right? The Moabite. And he's actually seeing the future of Israel. Very important, right? Because just like Rahab the harlot, she she foresaw that it, she was ahead of the game. And she saw Israel was going to eventually supplant uh, the Canaanites and inhabit that land. So she got ahead of the game. And was actually able to help and assist our eventual um, uh, uh, rulership, right? So you're seeing Balaam, the prophet for Balak, he's seeing the future of Israel, okay? So let's get verse 7. Come, the book of Numbers chapter 24, verse 7. Uh-huh. He shall pour the water out of his buckets, and his seed shall be in many waters. And his king shall be higher than Agag, and his kingdom shall be exalted. We, the Most High, brought him forth out of Egypt. Uh huh. He hath it. 
he hath, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. You see, so so again, the Most High's fame. When we left Egypt, right, the Most High got the credit of us uh, in, in our exodus, and that was again. That's like a, I mean, that's like Puerto Rico leaving the rulership of America by us by a mighty by a mighty hand, though, not by a treaty, not by like literally by America going and and losing everything. And the Puerto Ricans leaving and saying we're independent from America. That's the same exact thing, right? So these other nations saw our people leave by a mighty hand, where Pharaoh was forced to let us go, and we left with substance and raiment, right? We hit a lick in, in today's term, right? We left with with riches. You don't think the other nations that was roundabout that was scared of Egypt heard about this? God of Israel and was like, yo, I'm not I'm not doing it. I heard about this God, right? The king of terrors. I heard about this God. I'm not doing it. No, right? So it's the same thing here, all right? Balaam and, and the mighty nation of Moab, even they had to, to see what was coming around the corner, which was the Israelites' rulership. All right, where we at? Verse 8? Come, verse 8. Uh-huh, read that. The Most High brought him forth out of Egypt. He hath, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. He shall eat up the nations his enemies. His what? He shall, he shall eat up the nations his enemies. So I thought, but I thought God loved every all the nations. He shall eat up the nations his enemies. And so he was, he shall eat up the nations his enemies. Right? Come on. And shall break their bones. Mm -hmm. And pierce them through with his arrows. Mm. I don't sound like uh, God so loved the world to me. Read. <laughs> Verse 9. Uh -huh. He couched. He lay down as a lion and as a great lion. Who shall stir him up? Read on. Blessed is he that blesseth thee, and uh -huh. cursed is he that curseth thee. You see that? So even Balaam, right, understood Genesis. Let's get Genesis 12 and 3 real quick. Right. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and go to that blessing of Abraham. Uh, again, you know, again, the Christian church will tell you um, the blessings of Abraham is for all nations. Well, well, let's get the let's get the uh, the proper context on Genesis 12, verse three. Huh. It's the book of Genesis, chapter 12 and verse three. Start at two. Salaki. Salaki. Verse two. Uh huh. And I will make of thee a great nation, a great nation. He's saying, Abraham, I will make your nation great. But through thy seed, right, uh, it's going to go through Abraham and then to Isaac and then to Jacob. And Jacob's name is also what? Israel. Right. So that great nation goes down uh, and it doesn't go to uh, Ishmael. It goes to Isaac. It doesn't go to Esau. It goes to Jacob. OK, read. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. Uh huh. Verse three. Verse three. And I will bless them that bless thee. He said, "I will bless them that bless thee." Did the Moabites in the wilderness bless the Israelites in getting safely into the land of Israel? La. -ah. What about the Ammonites? La. -ah. Okay, got to be somebody. What about oh Esau? Clearly, right? Esau definitely because they're the brother of Jacob. They had to have helped uh, Israel go from Egypt over to uh, Israel, correct? La to the ah. Right. You see that? So it says, I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. So the nations round about never bless the Israelites. They only cursed them. We just read it in Numbers 24. We just read it in Numbers 23, right? Where the other nations, the Moabites in particular, were trying to uh, uh, curse the Israelites. They even tried to have them worship the God of Moab, which, you know, if another nation, if an Israelite worships another nation's God, we're done for, right? Most High is a jealous God. All right, so that's it on that. I will bless them that bless thee, right? And curse and, and, and curses them that curses thee. And it says, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Right. So but the stipulation is they have to bless us if they don't bless us and if they curse us, then they're going to be cursed. 
All right, so let's get uh, Numbers 24 and verse 10. Come, the book of Numbers, chapter 24 and verse 10. And Balak's anger was kindled against Balaam, and he smote his hands together. And Balak said unto Balaam, I called thee to curse mine enemies, and behold, mm. thou hast altogether blessed them these three times. Mm. <laughs> you see that? Did you catch God. that? I, God. So even even Balak said, I called thee, I called you to curse them, to put a curse on them. And Balaam Balaam was was loyal until he understood you're not gonna defeat the God of Israel. So he not only blessed them one time, he blessed them three times. All right. Uh, but even still, the nation, right, of, of Ammon and Moab cannot enter into the congregation. Right. So let's go right back to that Deuteronomy 23. And we'll be at verse number. Uh, so let's read number four again. Come. You want me to read four and then go into five? Come, come. Come. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23 and verse four. Mm -hmm. Because they met you not with bread and with water in the way. When you came forth out of Egypt, and because hired against the Balaam, the son of Beor of Pethor of Mesopotamia, to curse thee, mm -hmm. nevertheless, the Lord thy God would not hearken unto Balaam, but the Lord thy God turned the curse into a blessing unto thee, because the Lord thy God loved thee. Because the Lord thy God loved thee. Right. So let's get Nehemiah 13, right? Let's get Nehemiah 13. I, I love the way Nehemiah um, Nehemiah puts this together because uh, uh, ultimately it goes back to reestablishing the covenant of the Most High um, with the nation of Israel. And Nehemiah 13, um, let's start from the top, and then we're going to read down to verse number 3, I believe. Yeah, let's read down to verse 3. Come, it's the book of Nehemiah chapter 13 from the top. On that day, they read in the book of Moses in the audience of the people. And therein was found written that the Ammonite and the Moabite should not come into the congregation of the Most High forever. Come on. Because they met not the children of Israel with bread and with water, but hired Balaam against them that he should curse them. Howbeit, our power turned the curse into a blessing. Mm -hmm. Verse three. Come on. Now, now it came to pass when they had heard the law that they separated from Israel all the mixed multitude. All the mixed multitude. Stop right there. Hold on one second. Let me let me look up something real quick. Hold on. All right, can you hear me? Con. Huh. All right, con, con, con. So I want to get a biblical commentary real quick, um, because sometimes I go into this biblical commentary just to, just to get, um, uh, just I want I want to pick the brains of some of the top scholars on these scriptures, right? This is Eliot's commentary for English re readers, right? It says, um, hold up, Nehemiah thirteen. It says, uh. I want to get verse number two. It says, uh, let me get verse number two, right? This is Elliot's commentary on Nehemiah 13 and two. Hold on one second. Bear with me one, one quick, real quick. Let me just get this. <clears throat> uh, oh, wait, I passed it. All right. Oh, I have to log out and log in. Okay, it says, uh, it says, this is Nehemiah 13 and 1, right? It says, on that day they read in the book of Moses in the audience of the people, 
and therein was found that the Ammonite and the Moabite should not come into the congregation of God forever, right? And during this time, you know, right, that they was having the other nations all through there bringing in their oblations and their sacrifices, bringing in their burnt offerings and things of that nature. Right. And then again, it says, because they met not the children of Israel with bread and with water, but hired Balaam against them. Right. And of course, he tried to curse them. And then the Most High turned that curse into a blessing. And then um, they separated from the mixed multitude. Now, here's what I want to get in regards to the mixed multitude. It says, for the mixed multitude or the Ereb, which plays so prominent a part in Jewish history, and then it tells you to go to Exodus 12, 38. It says the process here was that of shutting out heathens who were in the habit of mingling with the people in the services. You see that? So the heathen, in particular, the Moabite and Ammonite, was mingling with the people in the services, which is, would be what? The Levites, right? It says in Nehemiah 9, it was, as we saw, the people's separation from the practices and the spirit of the heathen. All right. So I just wanted to bring that out because um, I was looking into that as I was prepping uh, a little bit for this um, for this, uh, this this run through about what other uh, scholars was 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 what their take was. And of course, you know, we all agree that this goes into uh, the heathen bringing in uh, and and actually being a part. Of the um, of the of the priestly duties, which was uh, as we saw, you can't do that, right? You can't have anybody but the sons of Aaron be a part of that. That's why I said in verse three. Now it came to pass when they heard the law that they separated from Israel all the mixed multitude, because the mixed multitude, non-Israelites, was in there in the time of Nehemiah, carrying out these priestly duties. Come. Right? Oh, uh, uh, praises. And it, it, it very well could have been a Moabite. Because why else would they go to Deuteronomy 23, verse uh, verse 4, right? Or uh, verse 3. Why would they reference that if it wasn't Moabites in there uh, doing out the priestly duties? All right. So I just wanted to bring that out. Um, all right, where we at? Let me get back on camera real quick. All right. All right. All praises. All praises. All right. So let's go back to it. Um, where are we at? Verse number six, right? Let's get verse six. Come. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23 and verse six. Thou shalt not seek their peace nor their prosperity all thy days forever. All thy days forever. All praises. All right. So let's get to it. Right. The, the moment that we all been waiting for the main event. Right. We, we had the preliminaries. We had the small fights. Right. We had the guys that was trying to cut weight and and, and, and do all that. The, the warm ups, the opening acts, so to speak. But I'm sure you guys wait. We'll be on 53 minutes. You waited 53 minutes to get the breakdown on Deuteronomy 23 and 7, all right? So we have to do a little bit of a buildup. Um, but ultimately, um, I just want to put in context what Deuteronomy 23 was talking about. And as we can see, it's all going into uh, a congregation, um, which is the tabernacle, which is, again, if you're another nation, it goes into how they're supposed, who or who cannot bring in their, um, their, their sacrifices and offerings. Um, uh, to to uh, to the temple under our under our leadership under our rule, and and I just want to say one thing as well, right? <clears throat> the Most High has it. Let's get Psalm twenty nine, right? Let's get Psalm uh, twenty nine. Is that what I want? Hold up. Or is it? Uh, where is it? When the scripture says. Um, I just lost my train of thought. Uh, when the wicked are in authority, the people rejoice. I mean, when the people are in, uh, when the wicked are in authority, the people mourn. But when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. Right? Is that uh, 
song of uh, Pro- Salak has Proverbs 29 and 2. It says, I'll bring it out since I'm already here. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourns, right? So as as Israelites, when we came into power, um, and David had, you know, Uriah the Hittite, and Solomon had um uh uh the 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 Edomite um that was coming against them, um you know, of, of course, right? They were under our jurisdiction, but they still were able and required to keep the feast days and um, have their own way of uh, uh, ceremonially observing the Most High. They're in their own way, right? So even right here, this is the whole context, right? That when they're in, the, when we're in authority and we're ruling over these other nations, they still have to bring in their sacrifices and their burnt offerings, but they can't come into the congregation to do so. They have to kind of bring it to somebody and then we do it for them does that make sense out come come all praises all praises all right so let's get uh deuteronomy 23 and 7. it's the book of deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse 7. Mm -hmm. thou shalt not abhor an edomite for he is thy brother he is thy what for he is thy brother. No, I you see that? So, brother, even some Israelites, right? And and I and I, I gotta say it, right? Some of our brothers that they wanna um look at Esau as like uh somebody that you don't talk down to or abhor or uh have any hatred towards, and they'll say because he's our brother, and they'll close the book right there. I, right? They'll close that book right there call it a day and they don't even want to debate you on this right it says thou should not abhor an Edomite for he is thy brother come on thou should not abhor an Egyptian an Egyptian now no one ever talks about the Egyptian come they always talk about who the Edomite that's right come on because thou wast a stranger in his land thou wast a stranger in his land hmm Interesting, right? Mm-hmm. Interesting. So I want to get Deuteronomy 26 and 5. Right? As a matter of fact, and, and before we do that, right? So I can't share my screen, but if you have a Strong's Concordance, that word Edomite is Strong's H-130, right? Which is Adam, right? But then it tells you that it's also strong uh 726 right now strong 726 h726 is a um, syrian right so it tells you it's a clerical error a clerical error and it's not an actual edomite <laughs> right it's a syrian so so what we can do right for the sake of the argument we can close the book after it says Assyrian. Close the book. Case closed. No debate. That word Edomite, thou should not abhor Assyrian, not an Edomite. Right? And, and brothers don't really study like that. Right? So what we do at Yahweh's camp, right, is we study um, and, and give the proper context and try to go far back as possible into the Hebrew scriptures as far as we can, as accurately as we can. Come. And they will tell you Strong's uh, H726 is the proper word that should be there in Deuteronomy 23, verse 7. Now we have a whole new nation that's supposed to be there, and it's not Esau. It's the Assyrian, right? So let's get that in um, uh, uh, Deuteronomy 26 and 5. Come It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 26 and verse 5. Uh-huh. And thou shalt speak and say before Yahweh thy power, a Syrian. A what? A Syrian ready to perish was my father. Uh Uh-huh. And he went down into Egypt and sojourned there with a few and became there a nation great, mighty, and populous. So who was the Syrian that went down into Egypt and then became a mighty nation, right? Who are we talking about? The Syrian, 
Right, let's get uh, Genesis 28 and 5. Right, because we, uh, eventually, um, well, let's, let's bring it out and then we're going to explain it. What it means when it says the Assyrian went down to Egypt. All right, All right, so let's get that in Genesis 28 and 5. It's the book of Genesis chapter 28 and verse 5. Mm -hmm. And Isaac sent away Jacob. Who? And Isaac sent away Jacob. Isaac sent away a man named Jacob. Come on. And he went to Padan Padanaram mm -hmm. unto, unto Laban. Unto Laban. Come on. Son of Bethuel, the Syrian. The who? The Syrian. So Laban is a Syrian, right? Who was the, who was, what, read on. The brother of Rebekah. So, so Rebekah is a Syrian as well. Come on. Jacob and Esau's mother. So Jacob's mother is an Assyrian. All right. Now, I also want to get, um, let's also get Genesis 25 and 20. Let's get Genesis 25, verse 20. Come, it's the book of Genesis, chapter 25, and verse 20. And Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife. The daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Padanarim, the mm -hmm. sister to Laban, the Syrian. The Syrian, right? So let's go right back to Deuteronomy, uh, Deuteronomy uh, 26 and 5. Come. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 26 and verse 5. And thou shalt speak and say before Yahweh thy power, a Syrian ready to perish was my father. So that just goes into. Jacob actually being called a Syrian because he was under the he was living with Laban for damn near 21 years, right? Working for his wives. And he became a Syrian. He became of the citizenship of Assyria. Right? There was no Israel back then. No land of Israel. So so the citizenship he had to take care of or took hold of was that of his mother's people, because they already had an established um uh uh like um boundaries of borders or land right the people of the, the the syrian people all right so um that's it on that right well let's finish that out come i'll take it again from uh 26 and 5 and come. thou shalt speak and say before the yahweh thy power a syrian ready to perish was my father and he went down into egypt and sojourned there with a few and became there a nation Great, mighty, and populous. You see that? Come. So let's sit on that, right? So now let's go back. Let's go to um, Second Kings sixteen and six. So, so what I want to establish is Yahweh's position, Yahweh's camps, Yahweh camps position that 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 word Edomite, right, actually goes to the Assyrian. And not who the Edomite is today. It's a clerical error, right? That's our that's our position, right? That's a clerical error, and then it's supposed to be the Assyrian right there, or the Syrian right there, not necessarily uh, Esau, the the, the so-called white man, right? Um, so let's get Second uh, Kings sixteen and six. Come, it's the book of Second Kings. And so, like, yeah, this is the same Strong's number. That we're seeing in seven two six, right? So let's bring that out. Come, the book of Second Kings, chapter sixteen and verse six. At that time, Rezin, king of Syria, recovered Elath to Syria and draw and drave the Jews from Elath. And the Syrians came to Elath and dwelt there until this day. Time dwelt there to this day, right? So I just wanted to bring that out about how that, that clerical error actually goes to this people group who is the our our foremother, right? Uh uh Rachel um Salakia. Yeah, our Jacob's mother, Salakia. So uh so Isaac's wife, right, Jacob's mother would be the Assyri the Syrian that is talking about in Deuteronomy twenty three and seven. Thou shalt not abhor the Syrian, 
right? Even though it says Edomite, because what we do, like again, we go back to the original manuscripts as as uh, as much as possible. E- English is good because we can read and write English, but if you start learning the Hebrew, now you know how to uh, really go into that and get a real understanding on how it was meant to be read and understood and not how it was written today, right? All praise. All right. So, um, kind of all praise to the Most High, right? So the word abhor is the Hebrew word awab, and it means abominable and grotesque, right? So even when you go into different um, understandings on that word abhor, it just means grotesque, abhor, or, or abominable, or nasty. So you cannot do like, uh, you can't treat the Assyrian, the Edomite, or I'm sorry, the Assyrian with a grotesque, rigorous, laborious um, uh, 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 work task, right? Where it's grotesque. We're, like we're not, Israelites aren't that type of people, right? Where we're not, like as Esau, when Esau had us in captivity, they did grotesque acts. They did abominable acts, right? They did a lot of things that were wicked amongst the Most High, right? So the, the Most High has actually given us a law. Do not do not be um, grotesque with them, right? Um, um, and then it says, Thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian because thou wast a stranger in his land. We're going to cut that as well when it comes to the Egyptian. But look at verse 8. Again, it's going into the congregation. Read verse 8 for me. Come, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23 and verse 8. Uh-huh. The children that are begotten of them shall enter into the congregation of the Lord in their third generation. All right. So so ultimately, whether you want to um, uh, uh, word it, however you want to say it, right, this is not talking about hatred. It's not talking about um, being mean, right? And in, in a lot of cases, it's not talking about not putting the sword to them. It's just talking about when it comes to their, their sacrifices, do not um, do not uh, be abominable to the to the Syrian and to the Egyptian, right? So so with that being said, right, I want to stop there. Um, I, does that make sense? Absolutely. Okay. All praises. So so now let's go into some a few precepts that actually uh, uh, go into how how the Edomite and the fate of Esau. Let's get Second Chronicles twenty five verse eleven. Let's start here. All right, and we're going to go through a few more. All right, and we're going to call it a night. But um, <clears throat> let's get Second Chronicles twenty five because I definitely want to um, highlight some of the. Um, the ways the Most High does feel about Esau and Amalek and all these other nations that qualify under Esau, right? So we'll start at verse 11. Come. It's the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 25 and verse 11. Mm-hmm. And Amaziah strengthened himself and led forth his people and went to the valley of salt and smote of the children of Seir 10,000. The children of the children of who? Seir. So the children of Seir, yeah, the children of Seir is is the children of Edom, right? Because you have a place called Mount Seir, Mount Seir, right? Which is south of uh, of Israel, of the nation of Israel, which is where you would see um, uh, the Edomite, that was the original land of the Edomite, Mount Seir, right? So this, this king, Amaziah, went down and killed 10,000 Edomites. Well, According to the scripture, that's abhorring, that's hatred, right? That's, that's, that's actually killing them, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. Give me verse 12. Okay, Second Chronicles chapter 25 and verse 12. And other 10,000 left alive did the children of Judah carry away captive. So 10,000 was killed, right, in Mount Seir, and another 10,000 was killed uh, what care was carried away uh, from the from the Judites. Read on. And brought them unto the top of the rock, and cast them down from the top of the rock. And did what? And cast them down from the top of the rock. 
and cast the Edomites down from the top of the rock. Right. Read on. That they all were broken in pieces. 13. Verse 13. But the soldiers of the army which Amaziah sent back, that they should not go with him to battle, fell upon the cities of Judah from Samaria, even unto Bethoron, and smote 3,000 of them and took much spoil. All praise to the Most High, man. Come. All praises. Come. Why right? autumn, autumn, uh, them Syrites had to fill the sword or they had to be cast down from the top of the mountain. You had ten. You had ten thousand, right? And, and another ten felt the wrath. Let's get Deuteronomy twenty-five seventeen, right? So, even when you go to uh, Deuteronomy twenty-three and seven, thou should not abhor Edomite. <laughs> let's go a, a a chapter and a half later, and let's start at verse seventeen. Come, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter twenty-five and verse seventeen. Mm -hmm. Remember what Amalek did unto thee. By the way, when ye were come forth out of Egypt. So if you don't know who Amalek is, right? Matter of fact, let me get that in Genesis 36. Amalek is one of the sons of Esau. Right? Amalek is who you would call the, the so-called Jew today. Go, goes back to the, to the Amalekites. Come. Right? So the, so the Amalekites... Um, are the, the progenitors of uh, Ashkenazi, Mizrahi, uh, uh, Hasidic Jew. All the Jewish sects that you see today goes back to a man named Amalek. All right, so I want to get Genesis 36, verse 10. And I'm going to read it. It says, these are the names of Esau's sons. And again, Esau is Edom. It says, Eliphaz, the son of Adah, the wife of Esau, Ruel, the son of Bashemath, the wife of Esau. Verse 11, and the sons of Eliphaz were Timon. And these, and even the nations, I mean, even Edomites, right? They named their, um, their cities after their forefathers, right? So when you go into uh, Isaiah 63, I think, where it says, who was this from Timon, Timon, or something like that? This goes back to uh, the, the the forefathers of the uh, of the, um, or the sons of Esau, right? So verse eleven it says, and the sons of Eliphaz were Timon, Omar, Zepho, Gatam, and Kenaz. Now verse twelve says, and Timnah was concubine to Eliphaz, Esau's son, and she bent to Eliphaz Amalek. These were the sons of Adah, Esau's wife. So. Esau's grandson is Amalek through through Eliphaz, right? So so now let's go back to uh, Deuteronomy twenty five seventeen. Come, this is Deuteronomy chapter twenty five and verse seventeen. Mm -hmm. Remember what Amalek did unto thee by the way. So, so the Most High said, "Remember what Amalek did unto thee by the way." Did Amalek treat us nice? No, right? Amalek did us dirty. Come on. When ye were come forth out of Egypt, how he met thee by the way, and smote the hindmost of thee, even all that were feeble behind thee. So, so Amalek not only uh, was trying to pursue our people, but he was trying to. It said, it said the ones that were feeble behind thee. You got the old, the young, uh, right, the handicapped, the yeah. ones that might have been injured or maimed. Those were the feeble, the ones that were uh, falling behind. As we fled, you had the uh, the feeble behind us that were amongst us. They fell behind, and Esau, right through Amalek, had no pity on our people. Hey, look, and they have no pity on our people today. That's right. Uh, that's right. Right. It, it, even Amalek was uh, the the financer of the transatlantic slave trade. People don't know that mm. the slave trade. Was financed through the uh, through the Amalekites. All right. So again, when when Esau said, I, "The days are my father at hand, and I will pursue my brother with the sword," he was serious. That spirit goes through from the father to the son to the son to the son to the son, from generation to generation to generation, 
now you see Esau still pursuing his brother Jacob with the sword. Right? So again, we're talking about thou shall not abhor an Edomite, but it, the most I said, remember what Amalek did unto thee. Right? Now let's get down to verse 19. Come. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 25 and verse 19. Mm -hmm. Therefore it shall be when the Lord thy God hath given thee rest from all thine enemies round about. So when we get rest from our enemies round about, when we come back into the land or when we come into the land the first time, read on. In the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it, that thou shalt blot out the remembrance of Amalek from now. This is a law, so like it. This is a law right here, because Deuteronomy is Torah, right? So, so if Deuteronomy is Torah, then the Most High saying you gotta blot out the remembrance. It says thou shalt. Anytime you see thou shalt, that is a law that must be kept. It says thou shalt blot out all the remembrance, right? Of Amalek from under heaven, thou shalt not forget it. So the Most High has given you a law to kill, to abhor the real Edomite, right? To wipe out the nation of Amalek. All right, let's get Exodus 17. Give me that in Exodus 17, verse 8 through 11. Let's get the Let's get the account of what the scriptures is talking about. Because sometimes you can say it, right? But it's always good to go back and read it. Because remember, as you're getting that, I want to get this last part. It says, thou shall not forget it. One of the things that put the spirit on our people to go out there and, and carry this law out with, uh, with no hesitancy. Because you can't hesitate, right? So the, the way that... that I like to position it is let's go back and revisit what they did to even get this uh this recompense. Right, come on, come on. You gotta go back and read it because then it puts you in the spirit of okay, well I see why they I see why they gotta go. Right? Every time you go back and watch Birth of a Nation, don't you put on your put on your spirit, hey, it's on. Right? When you see the, 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 the movies of our people going through through torture. Or you can just turn the news on, right? And then put that warrior spirit on our on our brothers and sisters, right? To to go out there and carry out these uh these uh these commandments. All right, so let's get that in um Exodus seventeen verse eight. God, it's the book of Exodus chapter seventeen and verse eight. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. Mm hmm. And Moses said unto Joshua, choose us out men and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of the most high in my hand. Come on. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the hill. Come on. Verse 11. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. Kamal Khan, right? That's it on that. So you see there's a war between Israel and Amalek, right? And they were, and brothers died fighting Amalek for no reason because they, they just didn't have the brotherly covenant. And they pursued our people with the sword. That perpetual hatred towards, the, uh, towards our people that it lives on to this day was even being carried out back then. All right. Uh, so Lockyer, and even when you uh, understand who Amalek is today and you think about, you know, Kanye and Kyrie ah. and how their response to what Kyrie and Kanye said with the buck breaking and, and publicly humil humiliating them and, and things like that. You think about revelation two and nine, where it says, I know ah. that in tribulation and poverty, that's right. That's but right. thou art rich, and I know thy blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. God. We've been at war with uh, Amalek from, from the jump scenes life. God.
Well, uh, uh, and to let me back off what you say, that's a powerful point. I, that really is because now it just puts something else on my spirit. Amalek now controls the music, right? Um, so, and the news, and the media, and the textbooks, Amalek also controls the, the money, all that, right? So, when we look at Amalek, that's one of the top nations that Esau has, right? That we have to go to war with because they're like the, the chief of all the other Edomites. When you go back into that lineage of Amalek, he is the son of a man named Eliphaz. Eliphaz, um, his, his name literally means uh, gold is my God or my God is gold. So his whole spirit was about money, right? Eli or Eli, which is Allah in the, in the Paleo Hebrew, the Lashawan, is Allah and the Faz is gold. So now he says, my God or Allah, Faz is my God, gold. So when it comes into money and economics and resources, who is the top nation that has that today? That's right. It's the, it's the son of Eliphaz, a man named Amalek. And then it got so bad that he's able to buy out all the other Edomite, his own brothers and sisters. See, Amalek, or Salakia, Esau has tribes as well. You got 12 tribes of Israel, you got 12 tribes of, uh, of Esau. And those 12, they all have their own attributes, just like Jacob and, and, and Yasha Allah. We have our own 12 tribes and our own uh, attributes and specialities. Amalek, his whole thing was having ownership, and, and you see him today, right? That's how you know who the Amalekites are. So few of them in number, but they are the richest nation per capita. Right. So even they 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 war with us with our music. They war with us with our movies. Right. Anytime I can go out there and it's saying I turn the music on and it's saying, oh, I just killed my own brother or I killed my own sister or I, uh, I, I put my own women on the street to make money. That's a psychological warfare that they're putting on our people. Right. It's a psychological warfare they're putting on our young people. They're not worried about us. Right, they worried about the young brothers that's coming up that wants to go out there and 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 uh, kill each other over a pair of Jordans, because the spirit and the vibration behind the music that Amalek puts out is geared to destroy our people for decades and decades and decades to come. That's right. Uh, that's right. Right. This is why Amalek must be destroyed because Amalek is the one behind the movie. Every movie. Uh, that our people are, that is produced, written, screenplay, written, and all that, uh, financed by our people, it has to be something with uh, guns, uh, drugs, uh, lascivious women, loose women, right? Promiscuous women. Um, um, it's got to be with brothers that's, you know, uh, uh, all about murder, all that, right? That's what the whole ideal is if it's our people putting it out because they make a contract with the production companies to put these things out there to put the stereotype of the so-called black Hispanic Native American in this ball in this bowl of being uh, uh, people that are troublemakers, gang bangers, <clears throat> right? And we're not we're not about that. A lot of our people are smart. Our people are are overachievers. Young kids, not only. Uh, uh, winning spelling bees, but winning science competitions, right? All these things, inventions, all these things, right? It goes back to, again, that crafty council and them making us feel like we're less than when we're really uh, God's uh, uh, greatest creation. Come on, right? all praises. All praises. So let's get a few more. I want to get First Kings 11. You got something up? La -a, la -a. All right, let's get First Kings 11 and 15. Right, <clears throat> First Kings eleven fifteen. I got a few more, and then we'll wrap this this thing up. To the spirit. It's the book of First Kings, chapter eleven and verse fifteen. For it came to pass when David was in Edom, and Joab the captain of the host was gone up to bury the slain, after he had smitten every male in Edom. After he did what? After he had smitten every male in Edom. So David, 
right, was was responsible for smiting all the males in Eden. Come on. For six months did Joab remain there until uh, Salakia. For six months did Joab remain there with all Israel until he had cut off every male in Edom. Until he cut off every male in Edom. So King David also was afflicting pain uh, upon the Edomite, right? But they never counted that as a sin. So, so again, when we out here talking to our Christian brother, and, and what's funny is, I never forget, we went to D.C. to teach. And um, <laughs> and, and, and a guy came by, Jake. I think he was a Jake. He came by on a scooter, and he was talking about the scripture right here, thou should not abhor Edomite. And as I'm explaining this to him, he didn't want to hear it, right? He didn't know that we had an answer for this. See, a lot of times, these other people, they, they don't think that we know the scripture already, right? They think that you just going to walk up to us and we're going to be like, oh, I never heard that. Let me go ahead and study that. No, no, we study this. And most camps have the same or similar breakdown to Deuteronomy 23 and 7. And this is Yahweh's camp's breakdown on that verse. All right. So, again, of course, you can hate the, uh, the Edomite. Christ hates the Edomite, right? Uh, uh, Jake, uh, uh, Joe, uh, not Joe, but uh, Joab and David was out there killing Edomites. And David was a man after God's own heart. That's right. That's right? right. Inflicting uh, pain, right? Let's get Ezekiel 25 and 12. Let's get Ezekiel 25 and 12. And, and if you notice, and, and if you disagree, you know, in the comments, I know the folks in the comments are going to come in. They're going to disagree. You know, you guys are spreading hate. And it says Edomite. I've heard people try to say, I don't go into the Hebrew. I read what's on the paper. That's fine. But what you can't get around is Christ coming back in Isaiah 63 to, to inflict pain on Esau. <laughs> Obadiah 1 and 18. Esau's going to be for stubble. The house of Jacob, Jacob of flame, and Joseph fire, and Esau stubble. All these different uh, prophecies that go into the fate of the white man today. Jacob have I loved. Esau have I hated. So the Most High, abhor, emo, so according to the logic of our other of our people, the Most High broke his own law. Jacob have I loved. Esau have I hated. But you can't hate Esau. Thou should not abhor Edomite. Well, the book of Malachi says different. Romans 9 says different. Right? This is this is almost uh, laughable at this point. Right? Okay. I will curse them that curse thee. Esau okay. has cursed us all through the annals of time. So Esau will be cursed. Right? So let's get uh, Ezekiel 25, verse 12 out. It's the book of Ezekiel, chapter 25, and verse 12. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh. That says the Lord Yahweh. Yahweh saying this now, right? Come on. Come. Because that Edom hath dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance and hath greatly offended and revenged himself upon them. Read. Therefore, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, I will also stretch out my hand upon Edom. So the Most High is going to stretch his hand out upon Esau. Come on. And will cut off man and beast from it. Come on. And I will make it desolate from Timon, and they of Dedan shall fall by the sword. You see that? So the Timonites, which is the Edomites, from Timon to Dedan, they're going to all be killed by the sword. Right? Verse 14. Verse 14. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel. So read that part again. I Come. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom mm -hmm. by the hand of my people Israel. So even the Most High is going to allow the Israelites to put their hands upon the Edomite. You saw a little bit of that <laughs> on that boat. Uh, <laughs> when that brother threw that hat. It was like, on. Like, like that brother looked like a referee. You know, uh, what's the what's the uh in the football, right? 
when they kick the ball on the kickoff out of bounds, the referee throw the hat. <laughs> they throw the God. hat up in the air. God. Hey, that was a violation. He was like, yo, violation. violation. That brother threw that hat up there. That shit went high, too. And it was on, right? It, they it was, was like laying the, vengeance. It was like the bat signal. <laughs> he, was let, he was letting Jake know, hey, look, it's going to go down. Let's it's go. getting ready. It's about to go down, man. And you had, like I said, brothers got their spiritual power. You had Jake with his phone in his pocket, jeans on, shoes, nice shoes probably, too. Jump in the water and swim 30, 40 meters, right? Mm-hmm. To to go out there and lay vengeance upon the Edom, upon the Edomites, right? That's right. By my people Israel, right? Read on. And they shall do in Edom according to my anger and according to my fury. And they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord Yahweh. Saith the Lord Yahweh, right? They're going to know the vengeance, right? Um, so a couple of scriptures I want to uh, just kind of reference first, uh, first Samuel 15, one through three, right? Saul was told to kill Amalek. Um, and we know that was the end of Saul, um, because he, uh, disobeyed the most high and, and the prophet Samuel and he left Agag, the king, uh, alive, right? Which is a Melekite. Um, another scripture is first Samuel 30, 17 through eight, 18, is when uh, King David, he actually goes through and kills the Amalekites. I want to get these last two. I want to get Amos 1, verse 9, because the Hamites, the Hamites can't get away out, right? We've been talking about Esau, Esau, Esau. I also want to go into the um, to the Hamites, because it says uh, an Egyptian, right? Uh, the Egyptian, because... Um, uh, they you were uh, a slave in Egypt. Do not abhor the Egyptian. God. Well, <clears throat> well, let's go into that real quick. Let's get Amos one, verse number nine. It's the book of Amos, chapter one and verse nine. Thus saith the Lord: For three transgressions of Tyrus, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof. So the so Tyrus, there these are Hamitic people, right? Come on. Because they delivered up the whole captivity to Edom. So they did what? Wow. And <laughs> because they delivered up the whole captivity to Edom. Uh-huh. And remembered not the brotherly covenant. So who was the captivity that the Hamites gave to the white man? Come. We're talking about 1619 trans- transatlantic slave trade. That's right. Right. Where the so-called African sold Israelites into slavery to the so-called white man, right? And because of that, the Most High is going to remember that iniquity uh, to the to the um, to the uh, people of Ham, right? Read verse ten. Come, verse ten. But I will send a fire on the wall of Tyrus, mm-hmm. which shall devour the palaces thereof. Now look at verse eleven. It's so fitting. At the most, I had nine, ten about Ham, and in verse eleven, who is this about? Verse eleven. Uh huh. Thus saith Yahweh, for three transgressions of Edom, uh huh, and for four. That means I'm really, I'm really angry. I'm really mad at you, Edom, right? And for four, come on. I will not turn away the punishment thereof. Because he did pursue his brother with the sword Mm -hmm. and did cast off all pity and his anger did tear perpetually and he kept his wrath forever. How long? Forever. Again, so we're talking about 2023. Esau kept his anger towards Jacob forever. We're in the book of Amos. Jacob and Esau is long gone. So, you know, we're not talking about the people. We're talking about the nation of Edom and the nation of Israel. Verse 12. Amos 1 and verse 12. Uh Uh-huh. But I will send a fire upon Timon, Timon, Salakia, which Mm -hmm. shall devour the palaces of Basra. And that goes into that Obadiah 1 and uh, 9 and Obadiah 1 and 18 about Esau being for stubble. And Jacob of fire and Joseph of flame. Most high is going to use us 
to destroy Timon, Basra, right? Uh, uh, Edom, Sierra, all these different uh, names for Esau, right? Because of what they did, all right? And then it goes into Ammon, right? Verse 13, it goes into the judgment of Ammon and all them and all those people groups. Um, I also want to hammer it home. This is my last verse right here. And then we'll wrap it up. Let's get Joel 3. So literally just go back one page. Joel 3 and 4. I want to rehammer that home about the prophecy of Hamites selling Israelites, spe specifically Southern Kingdom Israelites, right? The Negro into the hands of the white man because um, the book of Amos, Amos was a prophet to the Southern Kingdom. And the Southern Kingdom is full of, of, of Judeans or the, who you would call the Jews. So this wasn't geared towards the Northern Kingdom. These prophecies were specifically geared towards the Southern Kingdom, who you would call the Negro. And Joel is no different. Joel just says the same prophecy that Amos has. They have the same prophecy about the same uh, nation selling another nation into slavery. All right, so let's get verse four. Come, the book of Joel, chapter three, and verse four. Uh huh. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, in all the coasts of Palestine? All the coasts of who? All the coasts of Palestine. So didn't we see uh, Palestine over in um, verse eight? Uh, Amos one and eight. It says Philistines, right? And you know the Philistines. All the Palestinians, right? The real Palestinians are, are Hamites, not not Arabs. Duh. Right? The Palestinians, you know, they took over that name, but the real Palestinians are, are Philistines, right? So Palestine, Philistine is, is interchangeable. Right? And the coast of Palestine, um, which would be the coast of what would be the, the southern coast of, of Israel going into the, the land of Palestine, Palestine. Or Philistines. All right, so let's get read, read that again, verse four. Come, book of Joel, chapter three and verse four. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, and all the coasts of Palestine? Will ye render me a recompense? And if ye recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? So the other, the, the Palestinian, the Hamites are going to learn, they're going to pay for what they've done. Well, what did they do? Uh, verse, verse five. Verse five. Because ye have taken my silver and my gold and have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians. Con. So, so you see that the Hamites sacked the temple of the Most High, they entered into the congregation and took the silver and gold and all the pleasant things of the temple. And then they also, um, uh, uh, the children also of Judah, the southern kingdom Negro, right? And the children of Jerusalem have you sold unto the Grecians. Well, the Grecians is the white man, right? So you had Hamite selling Israelites, southern kingdom Israelites, and to the Greeks, right? Wouldn't be the first time, right? And they didn't make it the last time because they did the same thing in the American slave trade, um, you know, 1619 and, and forward, right? It says that, that you might remove them from far from their border, which is us being removed from, shoot, from Israel to Africa and then from Africa to the Western part and to the Americas. That's them moving us far from our border. Look at verse 7. Come, verse 7. Behold, I will raise them out of the place whither ye have sold them. He said, I will what? Mm. I will raise them out of the place whither ye have sold them. So the Most High said he's going to raise us out from the Americas. Hallelujah. Right? This is what we talk about when we talk about us getting that salvation, right? Being raised up out of that place because salvation is really being saved from who? Our enemies and all that hate us. Going back to Luke chapter 1, the 68th verse. So the Mosiah says, I'm going to raise him out of the place where you sold him. He sold us 
they, the Grecians sold us to the Americans, right? The white man had us in the slave trade right here in Raleigh, North Carolina, at some of these slave blocks and these options, right? And he said, I will return your recompense upon your own head. How? By the hand of the Negro getting his payback, right? The black man, black woman going to get their payback. Kwame, We're going to be out Kwame. there. Yeah, you got to do a Kwam National Olive because that's actually us getting our revenge. Right? The most high is going to use us to get that, that, get that revenge. I got these mosquitoes out here. Right? He says, I will raise them out of the place where you have sold them. The most high is going to deliver us from this land. We ain't got to worry about running anywhere. We ain't got to worry about playing anywhere. The most high is going to raise us about this land, about this hellhole you call America. All you got to do is just be obedient, keep the law, statutes, and commandments, and be, um, and, and be worthy. Right? That's what we talk about, being worthy to receive the benefits of salvation. All right? So that's it on that. You want to add anything on that as we close it out? Well, uh, uh, that, was, um, that was a powerful lesson. Uh, powerful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Again, it says, Behold, Joel 3 and 7, Behold, I will raise them out of the place where you have sold them and will, re and will return your recompense upon your own head. Right, so we talk about now. Uh, uh, let me just get one more. Let me get Lamentations for it. Let's get Lamentations for it, and we close it out here. Um, so as we talk about the scripture, "Thou shalt not abhor Edomite." Most high willing, if you were sitting here, um, and because I give me Lamentations four, verse twenty one, and we're gonna close it out with this right here. So if you had any uh, questions on what it means to abhor an Edomite, um, if you have uh, uh, concerns. Hopefully, uh, most I will, and this is able to edify um, uh, the understanding. Again, it goes back into uh, uh, bringing in your, uh, your sacrifices um, into the temple. That's what Deuteronomy 23 is about in the first place. At least the first uh, eight verses is about bringing in um, sacrifices and, and, and foods uh, uh, for the Levites and the priesthood things of that nature, burnt offerings, the priestly duties. Um, and again, that word Edomite goes into the word Syrian, which is a whole different nation going into the, the mother of, uh, of Jacob. Um, and, and he was, he was, I guess his mother was Syrian. So, um, you know, just wanted to bring that out. But, um, you know, we ended this, uh, this lesson off with um, scriptures that, that actually where Edomites are being Abused, killed, abhorred by the Most High God, by Yahweh Shahamashiach, and by the, the people of Israel, the, the, the men of Israel, going through and inflicting pain, torture, and torments um, on the Edomites, right? The so called white man. So um, you may ask, you know, hey, uh, what, what, uh, what hope does Esau have today? What do they have to look forward to? Um, listen, they better go out. And start telling blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans that they are the Israelites, they are God's chosen people, and that you know you must uh, keep God's laws, statutes, and commandments. That's the least they can do. They can also, um, you know, uh, get used to uh, servitude um, or, or be destroyed, or they will be destroyed. Right? Um, the house of Esau will be destroyed, and um, you know. The best they can do is just apologize, right? And and this verse right here is 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 going to hit it home for us and for Esau on the best that they can do um, as they have time now. Uh, bring that out. Uh. Con, this is the book of Lamentations, chapter four, verse twenty-one. Mm -hmm. Rejoice and be glad. It said, it said what? Rejoice and be glad. So. You know, rejoice, be glad, live it up, right? Walk down Glenwood drunk, right? Give everybody a citation if you're the police, right? Try to uh, try to fight a brother doing his job at the River Docks in Alabama, okay. right? Rejoice and be glad, right? Raise interest rates, defile the land, uh, it, uh, kill all the animals that are exotic, uh, 
create new diseases for us to get sick off of, give us contaminated food, redline our neighborhood for our young children, give our children uh uh what's the uh the thing that they're doing now, cancel culture, uh take all the information out the school about slave trade. Uh, fill the schools up with transgender, pedophilia, LGBTQ um, uh, 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 plans and actions or whatnot, right? Um, all the things that you're doing now, continue doing it. It's to rejoice and be glad. Live it up, right? Define the food. Give our young men contaminated cigarillos. Come. But they not talk about that, how the blunt rappers have all types of formaldehyde and rat poison in it. Give right. our give our children shots they don't need. Huh? Give our children shots they don't need that make them that has all this mercury in it. To when your kid comes out uh, jacked up, right? Put stuff in our food. Uh, uh, tell our young men, our women that they're black, uh, and and our young men that they're just nothing but thugs. Tell the Mexican that they're a property of Spain and they're that they're a damn wet bag. Have all the derogatory terms, right? Live it up. Be glad. Continue to put the Native American man on reservations and have him drink his life to death. Mm. Right? Continue to inflict pain on the world. Rejoice and be glad. Right? Read on. O daughter of Edom. Uh Uh-huh. That dwellest in the land of us. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. It says what? The cup also shall pass through unto thee. So that cup of affliction that we are drinking day in and day out as black, Latinos, and Native Americans, right? That cup of affliction that we that you subjugated us to over the years, our rap music, our mu- our, our movies, our literature, everything that makes a man uh, 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 black, right? Take our, our men out the household. That cup of affliction is going to pass also to you, right? You're going to have to drink that same torment, that same cup of affliction, right? Read. Thou shalt be drunken and shalt make thyself naked. Come on. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. All praise to the Most High, man. All right? Praise. All praise to the Most High. Right? Because now we understand when it says, Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, we went through a plethora of scriptures that just debunked that whole mentality. Right? So it's our, um, our hopes that brothers was able to understand this. Again, um, as we close it out, I definitely want to give uh, a, a shout out to the elders and to the priests of Yahweh's camp, um, Priest Jacanon, right, Elders of Kwan, uh, for, for getting brothers um, built up in this truth to be able to put this information out there with confidence, right? We have the confidence to put this understanding out. Y'all seen as the, as the um, lesson started, um, I'm out here outside and my neighbor, right, came out. And he was looking, or somebody was out here looking. It wasn't my neighbor. It was getting some work done, right? And and you got to be confident in putting this information out, even though the public, your neighbor may hear you, right? The, your boss may hear you. Um, whoever, your family members, they may hear you. They may challenge it. And if they, if they challenge it, we're able to confidently put the precepts in the Bible on the table and say, here's our understanding Here's our breakdown, right? We're definitely going to make sense of what you think, but where you can't get us is you can't make sense of the precepts that we bring out. You can't make sense of the scriptures of what we bring out. You can't make it fit your doctrine. And that's how Israelites win all the time. We break down what you give us, right? We eat it. We break it down. We give you the sense. And then when we go on offense, you can't make, you can't give us the same respect. You can't break down first kings 11 15 you can't break down first samuel 15 1 through 3 right you can't break down second chronicles 25 11 through 13 and make it seem as if the edomite must be respected when they're going to be killed they're going to be destroyed 
right? So, of course, you can afford to eat a mic. All right? So, with that being said, man, hope this is edifying. I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh. By Shema Mashiach, Yahweh Shai. All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, close this thing out. Kwame Asha'ala. Again, um, the next uh, uh, thing we got going up, we definitely got New Moon coming up in a few weeks. Uh, no, Salakia, August 17th. So in about uh, about a week and a half from now, um, we'll be um, uh, bringing in uh, the next month uh, coming up, um, which should be a really good lesson, really good time. So if you're in the area, uh, definitely hit us up. Uh, reach out to us on our YouTube or email us. Um, or come out to camp, man. We will be on North Square Park, more than likely on um, Saturday afternoon, um, from about uh, about two o'clock down to sundown, teaching the Word of God um, on Preston and Hargett Street. And then, of course, you can always find us on Glenwood Avenue, on Glenwood and North Street on Friday afternoon, uh, Friday evenings from about eight to about twelve. Uh, again, teaching the Word of God and putting this doctrine on the line. Hey, look. Um, Teaching in, in Babylon is not easy. It ain't for the faint-hearted. It ain't for the weary. It's for the brothers that have uh, uh, the, the spirit to do this. Um, but it has to be done, man. It's got to be done. The job's got to get done. And um, shoot, man, uh, uh, I'm just happy to have brothers out here that's able to do it, that's serious about this work, and that's, um, that's uh, fearless, man. Fearless and able to come out here and... Uh, put a lot on the line man you put your security your, your freedom on the line um and, and we're doing a good job doing that so hopefully most high willing we're able to continue this work um as the lord sees so fit until we get delivered out this uh out this out this uh this hell that we living in and um hey man all praise to the most high uh kazaki want to uh say anything before we close it out king and the water for reading too i much much appreciated king come 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 um, just want to give a shout out to the elders of, uh, of Israel. Um, just endure. We just have to endure, keep fighting, keep the laws, statutes, and commandments, have faith in Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, uh, stay the course. We have to stay the course. We're, we're getting closer and closer. We got to stay the course, Israel. Um, that, that's it. Um, the water for let me read for you, Cap. Kamakan, Kamakan. All praise to the Most High. With that, man, we say Shalom. Kwame Asha'Allah. All praise to the Most High. I'm about to uh, log off.